Hello and welcome back to the Fierce Kitten Studio channel where today we're going to talk about bag hardware. Oh? 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 No, not that kind of bag hardware. I mean like just like D-rings and rectangle rings and O-rings and hooks and snap hooks and gah. Okay, so all that stuff. We're gonna go over that, what they are, somewhat how you use them and what the practical applications are for. I'm not gonna do any demonstrations today. Um, and then like the difference between advanced hardware and beginner hardware and bag tags. So we're gonna cover all that in this video. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, let's go over the basic hardware that you need for bag making. Um, and by basic, I mean these are just the essentials that you're absolutely going to need to make some of even the most beginner style patterns, including zippered patterns um, that, that are smaller and yeah, kind of not like crazy. Um, so in terms of size, I tend to stock half inch and one inch hardware. I don't really go any bigger than that because the style of bags that I prefer to make are on the smaller side. If you're gonna start making larger bags like laptop bags or full size backpacks, you may wanna look into one and a half and two inch hardware. But in terms of what I actually keep on hand, um, almost always at least one inch and half inches around for like the smaller things. So we'll start over here on the right. I'm gonna move the zips over this way. So this is commonly called a D ring. And the reason for that is because surprise, it looks like the letter D. It's usually used as a way to, uh, to have like a hook connector. And so here would be like a snap hook and the hook would fit in here and it can slide around freely as opposed to the rectangular ring, which is this guy here. Um, if you try to put a snap hook in that, it's going to kind of uh, snap side to side when it slides around and it won't sit nice and evenly as opposed to the D-ring where it nicely guides the snap to sit in one particular location. So in general, I will use a D-ring when I know I'm going to have a snap hook connecting on the other end for like say a strap, um, but I'll use a rectangular ring uh, if I'm going to have another strap extending off either end of it. So, so usually like a strap connector and then for a shoulder bag, this would be where the shoulder strap would go. Um, because then I know it's a rectangular shape within a rectangular shape and it's not gonna slip and slide everywhere. Um, so in general, that's how I would apply those. So again, and then, so it's a D ring, a rectangular ring. All right, and this is actually, I'll, since I've got them, I'll just talk about them. So this is a snap hook. And the reason for that is because it just looks like, you know, a snap. And they're not the easiest to work with, but they are a little cheaper and you can get them in bulk um, quite easily. Um, and it has a D-ring on it, as you see. Um, but technically, whatever piece is going to attach to it here, I guess you could consider it more of like a rectangular, but the shape of it is D. Um, and then you have a lobster hook. And so it's like rawr, lobster claw. Uh, that's, that's kind of where that comes from. These are more stylistic. Um, they, they are much easier to snap open and close. So if it's, if I'm typically making a bag where I think the, the user of the bag is going to want to um, use the snaps to remove the straps off and say like with my convention raider or like a general belt bag or even a messenger, uh, I will probably use these hooks instead. Um, but sometimes with a wristlet, I'll just use these little guys. Um, again, they're not the most durable. I wouldn't use this on a larger bag. You can already see like the difference in the thickness um, from you know, the snap hook to the lobster hook. And I mean, each one varies based on the brand or whatever you wanna get. Uh, then you have the adjustable. 
So this is also called like a tri-glide, and the reason for that is one, two, three. And this is what you would use for an adjustable strap. Sometimes you'll find a tri-glide where the middle section is, is actually slides around. Uh, those work just as well. The ones that I have are all welded. Um, and one piece and so they don't slip and slide around and I find that they are more durable for fabric straps because that little middle piece isn't sliding around and wearing down the back of your strap. Um, so and this is a one inch and it, a section it, just a quick second about measurement sometimes they'll say the interior portion is one inch but they're actually like 1.4 so like this one is technically yeah, what or one and a, uh, one and a quarter? I mean, one and a quarter wide, but the interior portion is one inch. So that's what you're looking for in terms of measurement. So, like, if you go and you get a ring and it says, "Oh, the ring is one inch wide," well, make sure it says one inch interior, not one inch exterior, because then your interior is actually three quarters. So be be mindful of that. So another thing is purse feet. These are totally optional. I like to put them on my swoon Lolas um, or even on the bottoms of my messenger bags. And basically they just have these little prongs like this. And you just take a seam ripper and slice a little hole and then push them up into the bag and then fold these guys out to hold it in place. They do kind of spin around. So sometimes I'll put a little bit of stabilizer um, in the prongs and then fold outward like that. So it kind of just adds a little bit of extra strength to it. Uh, I do this with magnetics and even my tags, um, but, uh, or glue, glue works too. Uh, these little guys, it's, they're, they're called belt tips uh, or strap ends. Uh, you'll, you'll see them more, uh, more or less called belt tips though. Uh, these little guys are great to put on the ends of your straps so you don't have to try to do like a, a no raw end solution to it. Um, so I'll just put these on the end of them. Uh, I find it to look a lot sleeker and a lot more professional if you use something like this as opposed to going with like some sort of solution where you just leave it raw. Even if it's a vinyl strap, it just doesn't look professional. So um, I try to cap them off with these guys. And all you do is you take, you slide, you slide your fabric in there, or you just kind of like wed, wedge the, the strap in there and then clamp these shut. And you can just use pliers. I have uh, needle nose pliers I use, and I just snap them. So these will actually, they're just aluminum, so you can just kind of push them shut. I don't want to waste this, <laughs> but you just push it shut slightly and then tighten with a clamp. All right, next is one of the more popular items and this is a magnet. So this is, they come in two sizes. This is an 18 millimeter. This is gonna be your most commonly used size. Um, and then there is a 14 millimeter that's significantly smaller. Uh, I actually don't have any of those on hand because I don't really use them as much as I thought I would. Um, so I just don't have them anymore. Uh, but the 18 millimeter, is typical for what you're gonna use. It's about five eighths of an inch ish, yeah, or, or yeah, ish. <laughs> Math! So, so uh, you have the male end and the female end. I will let you guess why that is. What? It's like, it's like crazy or something. How do they even work? So, just like the purse feet, they have prongs on either end. You just uh, slit open the fabric very small and slide it in and then fold the prongs outward. You'll see this in a lot of my videos where I've done patterns. I actually, you'll see some people will say fold the prongs inward. They're not supposed to go to the inside. That'll make them way too loose and they won't snug the fabric. So fold them to the outside. That's the correct way to do it. All right, now, and I am kind of bum rushing through this but that's purely because it's a lot of hardware and I'm just going over basic uses, not actual like a demonstration of how to use it. Um, but this is a key lock and this is one of the more advanced pieces and I was tempted to just like kind of throw it off to the side and wait for the advanced stuff. Um, these guys require like hammers or patience, neither of which I really have. So I, I rarely use these, but I do have them in stock only because some people want a little ex extra security on like a messenger bag flap 
or uh, backpacks and wallets, especially especially if their no, if their client is known for stuffing a wallet. Uh, these are great. So, th but I've also I have found that the magnets are perfectly strong enough. But that's totally up to you and the taste of your sewing needs. Um, so it's two pieces, or technically three. So this actually, I got these from Gold Star Tool. Um, and there are different versions of these guys all over the place. The ones that I have have two small screws. You unscrew them, and this comes apart and has two pieces. And that you sandwich your fabric piece in there, but you've got to cut the hole out for it, right? Um, and also, if, you, if you've ever had trouble with these, um, I cut little triangles open on either end of the oval for where these guys go for the screws, because otherwise you can't dig the holes in there. It's, it's like practically impossible. And then you've got this piece here, which is the actual turnkey, and that, that goes in the other end of your piece. So like this would be in the base of the bag and this would be the flap. So this would always go on the flap. And then it just basically goes in and turns and locks it. And so you've got, you've got a turn lock. So these are pretty advanced. I can't see a beginning sewist using these. Um, in general, a beginning sewist should at least have your 18 millimeter magnets, some kind of hook. You don't need to get fancy ones. Tri-glide and rings. You can, get a buy, you can get by without the rectangle rings if you're gonna do like straps with hooks and just go with a D-ring. All right, so those, let, let's get those guys out of the way. So zippers. So a lot of bag patterns are gonna tell you you need to use a number five zipper. The number correlates with the size of the coils and the width of the tape. So a number five zipper is going to be one inch wide. Well. I guess tall in this case. Wide if you go this way. And then the the dress zipper, which is like more of like a, a, a three or a 3.5, these are significantly smaller. A lot of people will use these for um, like smaller interior pockets um, or or even just like little little coin purses. And that's fine. I have actually grown to enjoy using the larger zippers because I feel like they they glide easier. Um, these are YKK zippers that I got at Zipper Stop, and don't worry, I'll put all of this information in the description below. But then I've become addicted to using zipper tape. So if you can see yourself making a ton of bags, stock up on this stuff because you can just cut whatever width you need off of it instead of keeping like a variation of colors and and sizes and whatnot, and then you, you end up wasting. So like most of my interior zip pockets I would use this for are only about seven to eight inches wide. And so in, you know I end up cutting most of this off and it just goes to waste. It's a total waste. Otherwise, what I have to do is just stock up in all those smaller sizes and that's actually pretty expensive. So once you add everything up, it ends up being cheaper to just get this stuff. So, and, and I will link to this because it comes in rainbow and gunmetal and chrome and black and it's, it's great in all different colors. Um, and so I keep those around. The only tricky bit is getting the zipper head on it, <laughs> which is gonna be a completely different video where I have to cover zipper construction and usage. Um, but it comes with the, the, the zipper heads, and usually it's enough. You can just buy extra zipper heads if you find that you're using, like if you're using it more for smaller pockets than larger pockets, you will run out of zipper heads, um, but you can buy additional ones just for that. Okay, so that covers zippers and some of your basic hardware. So let's go over advanced hardware. Okay. For advanced hardware, what I mean is you don't really have to have this as a beginning bag maker. These are the kinds of things you're gonna get into when you get psychotic like me. So, so basically, once you get to a point where you want to add a little more bling or you wanna work with thicker fabrics like vinyl or leather, um, that's when you're gonna start looking at more of like adding leather working tools to your toolkit. Um, so I'll go over a few of the things that I have that you're probably going to find useful if you're going to go down this rabbit hole of, of despair and vinyl exploration. 
So this right here is a rubber mallet. So I got this from Tandy Leather. You need a rubber mallet. If you get something and you just use like a regular hammer that's, that's steel, you're gonna run into some issues because it's gonna wear down your tools. All right, so you need to have something like this in order to use the handheld tools for doing things like cutting holes. So basically, these are this is a hole punch kit that I got off of Amazon, and it comes in various sizes. You, you can see like they have like a small slit in here. Like I actually used this recently for an Animal Crossing bag. Um, so this is the end that's the sharp end, and that goes where you would like, you know, where you'd like the hole to go. And then you'd basically just hammer, um, hammer the top end here. So if you use metal a metal hammer, it's gonna wear this down and it'll eventually ruin your tool. So you don't wanna do that. So that's why you use like a nice little acrylic or, or rubber, rubber based mallet like this. Um, so again, like this is, this right here was a specialized tool kit with various sizes for cutting um, little holes. And typically I just use this big guy here like for um, grommets. Okay, so then I have a very fine point tool from, again, from Tandy Leather. Um, and this guy can, you can screw out this little, this little portion here and put in for larger holes. So like this, and it just screws in. I typically use this smaller guy. And I really only need this kind of kit when I am, uh, trying to punch holes into areas that I can't reach without my punching tool. So I have this little handheld leather puncher. Now mind you, none of the stuff is super expensive, which is great. <laughs> so it's like, if you're gonna dive into it, don't worry, it's not gonna break your bank. This little guy I think was like $10. Um, but you just, it's got a little pressing plate already down here and all you do is have to rotate this guy to the hole that you need. And this, the sizes here basically match my Tandy leather um, multi-tool here. And you just put your fabric inside and squeeze to punch the hole. And it's really kind of cool. It comes with cleaning kits and everything. Um, this is very handy if you're just trying to punch holes in the straps and don't have to worry about it. However, if the, if the hole you need to punch is like way deep in the bag, this isn't gonna work because you're probably gonna like, this will, these are very sharp. They will scratch your bag surface. So you don't wanna like try to squish your bag in here. Um, that's a bad idea. So hence why I suggest having one of these little standalone punching kits. Um, so, so that covers making the hole. How do you fill the hole? So there's a couple different bits of hardware, um, but the most popular is a double cap rivet. And by double cap, I mean they are both domed, whoop, <laughs> domed on either end. So it's a nice smooth dome on, on the smaller end and then the longer end with the shaft also has a nice smooth dome. These are very popular to use in the Necessary Clutch Wallet by Emmeline Bags. Um, and the reason for that is because a lot of people can't sew the bulk that is at the very end when you're trying to pull up the sides. Um, and so people will put a rivet or two into those sides and that'll keep them there. Um, so you just punch like the world's smallest hole. And by the way, these are nine millimeter and I, I did get them from Tandy Leather. They are the mediums at Tandy. Um, so you can attach these in, in, in a couple of ways. One, there's the Dritz way. They have a gun that's very similar to this. I don't recommend it. It's not terribly sturdy. Also, if your rivet is gonna be placed way deep in the bag, again, you run into this, the same problem where you don't have enough throat space on the press. So I wouldn't do that, but be my guest if you wanna try. The other thing is you can get a very simple hammer and anvil set specifically for domed items. And what I mean is on on the anvil, it's, it's uh, it's got a divot that's nice and smooth. And that is where, that's where your end cap goes. Just like so. Actually, wait, I'm sorry, I apologize. The shaft portion is facing up. 
And then on the punch end, you have another, the, the end here is domed as well. And so it fits nicely in there. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, press it flat and it doesn't lose that nice shape to it. The reason I don't like this <laughs> is because I get nervous as heck a doodle about it. So the reason for it is because <laughs> it can slide all over the place when you're working with it. And so you have to have a very steady hand. I do not. Okay, so I kept ending up with my uh, the shaft being bent and pointing in the wrong direction or not going in all the way or breaking. And so I was like, nope, we're not doing this anymore. Nope, 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 nope. And so I put this kit away. This might be sufficient for you if you're a steady handed person. I am not. So we're going to put that over yonder. So I actually pitched Ford to get a press. I'm just going to lay this down gently like so and go over what the press is. So this is an investment. You're looking at probably $100 all said and done with the press um, and also getting the piece specific to what you need. And this is called a die set. So it has a base and then it has a top. Okay, and this matches basically the anvil and the hammer set uh, that you would use. So this bottom portion here is meant for nine, all of this actually, this die set is meant for a nine millimeter rivet. Um, and so I put this bottom portion on this end, my fabric right through the middle and the cap will just fit right up in this little area here. And then I pull on the lever and pull it down. So why do we even have that lever? <laughs> so, and then the way you can replace the dies, because I have one for smalls as well, and I also have them for grommets if I want to attach grommets, is you just unscrew them. And this portion is more like drop because it's not gonna, it's not hanging, it's not dangling, so it doesn't have a screw. Now, each press is different. I did get this from Gold Star, um, and I, I know some people don't like Gold Star. That's fine. I bought this a couple of years ago. Please don't internet cancel me. Um, there are, there are others. There's Kai snaps and, um, and, and then a few on Amazon. I can't speak to any of those. I've never used them. I've had this for a couple of years and I have not had any issues. Um, but please, as always, and with anything ever recommended on the internet, please research it before you buy it, especially something like this. that's going to cost you a hundred dollars. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to be responsible for everybody's pain and agony. This, however, is only $10, so you can't sue me over emotional damage. All right, now the last little portion, you probably saw it sitting off to the side, is bag tags. So when you get into crazy town and you decide that you want to be extra fancy, uh, you may be wondering, how can I get these fancy tags that everybody has on their bags? Well, some places will actually carry one that just says handmade very clearly. It's, it's very nice and they're just as good. But if you want to get custom, um, I'm going to leave a link below. So I actually went to a place that was highly recommended by the So Whatever group on Facebook. Um, that is Lauren Mormino's group. Um, and uh, it's a guy that uh, basically a factory in China um, that uh, I found on Alibaba. Uh, that will do these for you. Now they actually carry them in uh, chrome, which is what I have, and I just did this because it goes with everything. They also carry black, gunmetal, rose gold, brass, and they have that nice rainbow option. So if you like like this kind of stuff, like these tulip pink scissors, um, then you're gonna you're gonna like that. So um, he does have those options. I will say turnaround time. You're probably looking at anywhere from 20 to 60 days. So please be patient. The upside to it is ultimately it costs less than getting woven tags. So um, I do have woven tags, and that's what I used for years until I found this guy. So uh, now this is a one inch by one inch plate. Uh, and it has two prongs on it. If you go wider um, and s a little less tall, uh, then you won't have much of an issue attaching it to a bag. Um, I did have to ask for the washers to come with it. If you don't ask, they won't come, and then you have to wait for washers. Um, I do say that what you need to do is put a little dab of like fabric glue, like fabric tack behind this, um, and then attach it to the bag. 
Um, but it's just like a magnetic, the prongs will are up like this, and then you stick it in, and Bob's your uncle. So I'm gonna fold that back down because I haven't used this one yet. <laughs> but um, I think all said and done, they probably came out to be about 50 cents per. Um, and the next time you order, unless you're gonna change the design, he keeps your uh, mold on hand so he can just spin up and do a reorder. So I recently reordered 100 more of these in Chrome and 100 in the rainbow. Um, because that's a new option. He didn't have that when I ordered these over a year ago. Um, so as far as the investment goes, I feel like it is very much worth it. Um, I personally saw an uptick in bag sales after I started officially tagging my bags in this manner uh, because it just looked more professional. Actually, let me show you an example. I'm gonna go grab that example. Okay, here's the example. It's this is a convention raider that I'm too lazy to put on the shop, right? But look at how nice that is just sitting right there. It looks like, like a professional product. Um, now, if you've got jagged lines or you, you install your zippers unevenly, nothing's gonna save you, not even a professional tag or really cool space cats. However, it does make for a cleaner presentation. Um, I think I spent $220 for my first batch of 200. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm not including the mold in that cost, which is where the 50 cent, about 50 cents came in, um, because I knew I was gonna reorder more. But just so you know, that's how that works. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, again, I'll put a link down below. The contact name is Bruce. Um, and he's really sweet and make sure you let him know that I sent you. So how do you want to store all of this glorious hardware if you do decide to go full on into bag making and buy the stuff in bulk? Because storing it in the bags just isn't practical. So what I've actually decided to do is, um, depending on the size of the hardware that I'm getting, I actually store them in a couple of different ways. Um, I did purchase from like an organization store these little Tupperware containers where I just stick the original bag where I purchased it and then the hardware. And the reason I keep the original bag in there so I can remember what the heck it was. Um, you can also just like put a little label in front of it, a post-it note, whatever works for you. Um, but I keep these organized like this and then they're upright in the bowl, and in, uh, in the drawer rather, and I can actually see what it is when I'm reaching in. Now at this point, after four years of doing this while live streaming, I actually know where everything is, so you could blindfold me. So it's like, I don't bird box the room too much, but I could. Um, for the larger hardware or the hardware I don't use as often, I actually chuck in these bigger containers. And this is just like some cheap container I got at the grocery store. I don't know if you're supposed to put sandwich or chili in it, but hey, it works. It works for hardware. And so this is where I store like the bigger things where like these, these are my turn, my turn locks, which I had already stated I don't use as often. Um, I just don't like, I don't like them. Like as a user of a bag, I'm just not a big fan of turn locks, but hey, sometimes I get a client who's like, hey, I'm afraid I'm gonna get broken into, so can you please put that in there? Or hey, I'm a little with my wallets and I drop them all of the time, so put one of those on there. So that's, I just keep, I just keep the most unused stuff uh, up and away, like in the bookshelf that's back there. Now, I have this pegboard that's just behind me that I got at Ikea, and that's actually what I prefer to use uh, for the things I need to reach for all of the time. So my D-rings, my rectangular rings, my snap hooks, and my magnetics. All of those things I keep in these nice little neat containers that I got that come with the pegboard at Ikea. And they just snap in there in any configuration that I need that's best for my uh, workflow when I'm live streaming. So I can just reach right over under the camera and grab everything and keep going without interrupting the broadcast. Um, that's actually been really nice. So if you have wall space, highly recommend getting the pegboard for at least the stuff that's easiest for you to like reach for like all the time. So now you may be wondering, kittens, where do I buy all of this glorious bag hardware? All right, so first, I am not sponsored by any dang body. Okay, I'm just gonna be completely honest and tell you where I get my stuff. I, I go to Amazon a lot for the bulk stuff. Not everything bought in bulk is good. Uh, a lot of people will tell you like, oh, you gotta go to so and so's place or blah to get like the highest quality stuff. Um, 
But what people neglect to realize is a lot of the basic hardware that you need, even as a beginner, like D-rings and rectangle rings and snap hooks, are very identical to like dog collar hardware. That's where Country Brook design comes into play. So I, I'm making sure I don't cover up the logo. <laughs> Country Brook design um, has been where my I've gone for years. Um, I buy some of the basics from them. They don't have the fancy looking lobster hooks. I'm sorry, they don't have the rainbow hardware, but they have your general stuff and it's all in Chrome. I have never had an issue with any other stuff breaking or fading or flaking, um, which sometimes you'll see. They don't carry things like the magnetics. Um, so that's when I go to Amazon and I'm not terribly picky about my magnetics. I basically just look for magnet sets and then I look at the reviews and I'm pretty smart about it. Um, but you can buy like a hundred sets of magnets on Amazon for next to nothing. Now, if you do want to step up and you want fancy hardware, highly recommend Mormino.com. Again, that is from the So Whatever group and that's Lauren's uh, group and her shop. Go there, they're fantastic. Also, Emmeline Bags, for those of you who are in Canada, she will ship to the States. Um, so just so you're aware, that's a possibility as well. Um, and she also carries some specialized hardware. Um, these are the places that I highly recommend um, and have shopped at in, uh, multiple times in the past. Again, like bulk stuff, just talk to them. Talk to Lauren, talk to the Emmeline people, see if, if they have some kind of deal if you buy like in bulk. I don't know, I've actually never done that, but you could give it a shot. So I hope this video helped you. As always, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you like to catch live sewing content, I am streaming on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at twitch.tv slash fierce kittens starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. I know it's late, but sometimes people gotta sew late too. So hope to see you there and thank you very much. Bye.